each year now, Delta Airlines provides us with a plane. And we take a plane full filled with children that have chronic and terminal illnesses. And we bring the whole That's family amazing. down to Walt Disney World for the entire weekend. And um, it's really just kind of a magical time just to get away from Atlanta, get away from the hospitals, get away from the protocols, get away from the real world, and go to Walt Disney World where it's anything but real, where anything is a possibility. Now I'm going to show you where the money is going. Well, uh, the tolls, their child, Alexis, doesn't even know she's going That's to Walt right. Disney World yet. That's right. She has no idea. Now, Mom, uh, Tracy, found out weeks and weeks ago what was going on. Nobody else in the family knows, so she's had to keep this secret from the family for weeks. And this morning, it's all going to go down, and she's going to tell them, and we're going to join her while she tells her child live that she's going to Walt Disney World. <clears throat> I want you to know, Alexis, that today, in just a couple of hours, you and your family and everybody that you see right here, <clears throat> we're going to be getting on a plane here in a couple of minutes. Yeah. <laughs> keep going. Oh Let's keep walking. <clears throat> and in a couple of hours, we're getting on a Delta Airlines plane with a bunch of kids just like you that are as special as you. Oh, my gosh. I think I'm going to be crying. I think I'm going to be crying, too. <laughs> it's a good idea to do that. <laughs> now, you don't even know where you're going yet. All you know is that you're going on an airplane. Have you ever been on an airplane before? No, but this is my big day. <laughs> this is your big day. So not only are you getting on a plane, but now I got to tell you where that plane's taking you. Okay, now start looking around a little bit. Who's Walt that? Walt Disney World, Minnie. That's Minnie. Mickey. The plane is taking you to Walt Disney World. Oh. Come in here. And you're going with all these people today to Walt Disney World for the whole weekend with your family. All of these people here are going to be going to Walt Disney World with you, too. Are you coming? I'm coming, too. You bet. My, oh, my, what a wonderful day. Plenty of sunshine in my way. zippity doo da zippity a Mr. Blue. Birds on my shoulder. It's the truth. It's actual. Everything is satisfactual. Zip a dee doo da. Zip a dee a. Wonderful feeling. Wonderful day. We went to a luau last night at the Polynesian Resort where we're staying. And I thought, how many of these kids are going to be exposed to that type of culture and dance? And just it, because the whole um, uh, show is is trying to um, introduce you to the countries along, you know, the Pacific Ocean, mm -hmm. and it was just and the dancing was cool. And I thought, you know, it's an honest luau, and a lot of people go to Hawaii to experience something <laughs> like that. And it was just neat to see the kids get so excited, especially with the guy that was uh, twirling the flame rods. I called my husband last night because we have been to Hawaii, and we did go to a luau, and I said Disney does it way better. <laughs> oh, I've been to a Hawaiian luau. It was nothing like what we saw last night at the Polynesian Resort. Even even at home, if the kids have gone to Six Flags, and I think they've been once in the last six or seven years, only one of us would take them because the other one would stay home with Sally. And Sally's not able to do a lot of the things at Six Flags. She's been able to do a lot more here than and she's been able to do at home. The last vacation we went on was in 2001, and it was just a mini vacation where I took them to Chattanooga, Tennessee. She and I have never taken a vacation. It's too important for me to stay at work and work as much as I can. There must be um, different levels to cerebral palsy. I'm kind of getting educated to this just like everybody else. Yeah, he has a severe level because he has uh, trouble motor skills, of course. Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't go to the bathroom, you know, like regular kids. Um, can't walk, can't write. He uses a communication device. He's got his Dynavox. Mm -hmm. um, it just affects him totally physically, but not mentally because mentally he's... 100% there, That's you know? for sure. That's he for sure. He likes the girls, you know? He does the same thing as everybody else. <laughs> right now, There's no words that can put into description Christopher Romero's 
smile. True. Oh yeah. You can try. <laughs> there has not been a word invented yet for that smile. It's true. You know what I'm saying? Yep. He's just a special kid, and the smile just—you look at him, and you just start smiling with him. And the thing is, he has to use a mechanical device to help him talk. And I think the beauty of it—it it just shows you that all it takes is a smile to make somebody else feel great. Yeah. And he makes us all feel great, and he doesn't—he can't say anything. Yeah. You know. He's awesome. So. <laughs> hey, Christopher, are you gonna leave any women for anybody else? Else, man? No. Forget <laughs> <laughs> it. They're all mine. I know, right? Takes them all, man. <laughs> Takes them all. Christopher, did you have a good time? Yes. <laughs> what was your favorite ride? My favorite ride was Splash Mountain and Space Mountain. <laughs> oh, okay. nice. Well, Chris always known that he was my special gift sent to me. He brightens our family lives in so many ways and opens my, my, my eyes to make me so strong. He never lets anything bring him down. Even though everyone looks at us a little different, if they only knew how special and unique Chris was, they'd want him for himself for their family. You make mom feel like a lovesick puppy each time I see a big smile. Sometimes when I just look at you it brings tears to my eyes i love you Bert, this was an unbelievable trip to disney me my mom my brother and sister did too and everyone else did we were so happy that we got to go to disney is all because of you and the bird show thank you i think one of the sw sweetest moments i got to witness was alexis on uh, I think it was, now I'm getting the itinerary confused, <laughs> on Saturday night at the fireworks at Epcot. And when she was watching the fireworks, I thought her description was so great. She said, they're growing. Every time one of the fireworks would explode, she was like, oh, they're growing. And then you looked over at Bert and you said, Bert, you're the greatest guy I ever met. And I just, just yeah. teared up right there. He is? He did. He took us to Disney World. <laughs> That's what I should thank him for. Well, you're very, very, very welcome. Jeremy was diagnosed when he was three with um, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, the problem was he cried constantly with pain. And um, the doctors never could quite figure out what was wrong with him. They thought it was growing pains. And we just kept insisting that it was more than that because it wasn't muscle pain. It seemed to be in the joints. And um, so they did a, a blood test and came, came out that his ANA was off the charts, and which meant an autoimmune deficiency or disease. And uh, they sent us to a rheumatologist and that's when he was diagnosed with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Mm -hmm. And Hannah, your daughter, uh, has some medical problems also, correct? Right. She has a congenital heart defect. So you're dealing with two kids. Right. Boy, that's good. that must be tiring every single day. Are you kind of, when you have two children that have illnesses that are as severe as this, are, is there kind of a bubbling anxiety all the time with the parents? Always. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You never know what to expect day it, to day. It just has to be exhausting after a while. Yeah. It is. Looking on their faces and taking the time out to go this place and go that place, they are really, they are, they are just, they just have enjoyed this trip. Salagadoola, Michigaboola, bibbidi bobbidi Put them together and what have you got? bibbidi bobbidi Salagadoola, Michigaboola, bibbidi bobbidi It'll do magic, believe it or not. Bibbidi bobbidi boo. Now salagadoola means a menchikaboola roo. But the thing in the pot that does the job is bibbidi bobbidi boo. Do <laughs> 
They both have cerebral palsy, um, but they have different types. Mackenzie's muscles are tight, and Madison's muscles are weak. So she has trouble controlling her motions. She gets going too fast and, and walks up on her toes um, and has trouble with her left hand mm -hmm. writing things. And, and Madison, she walks with a walker, but her legs, she just has to work ten times harder to exert the energy that we do. Right. So, and she burns calories ten times as fast as we do. Right. So um, she, she does walk, but for long distances she's in the wheelchair. So Mackenzie said something to me yesterday when we were on the bus on the way over here. She's like, I used to not like it that I had cerebral palsy. She goes, now I'm kind of glad. Because I get to go to Walt Disney World. She's like, you know, she's like, my, my, you know I have to wear some braces and my toes kind of bother me. But this is great. This is so sweet. Mackenzie, Madison, and Kelsey, I want you to know how lucky I feel to be your mommy. I never imagined when I was young like you that I would grow up to have the best job in the whole world being your mommy. You've taught me more in your first little years than any grown-up ever did. And you guys take on very difficult things and you work so much harder than most and you always make it look so easy. And your sweet little smiles and your brilliant sunny little personalities let your glorious souls shine so brightly for all of us to enjoy. Um, I enjoyed seeing your faces and hearing your laughter all week. This is your reward for the amazing way that you inspire me and everyone who knows you to laugh harder, appreciate more often, complain a lot less, and for giving such a great example of the kind of person that we would all like to be. And I hope you know how very special that you are to me. I love you. All right, Mackenzie here is going to tell you what our next surprise is. So we want to welcome... Minnie and Mickey Mariah was diagnosed with ALL leukemia um, two years ago. Um, she was diagnosed January 31st, 2003. Um, uh, leukemia is cancer of the blood. So far, Mariah is doing pretty good. Um, we've had a lot of, uh, you know, hard times to go through with her. Uh, being sick, I think the worst part of all was uh, watching her suffer, not being able to do anything about it. You know, the first two weeks that she had it, she laid in, a, in the bed, uh, she had a morphine drip. Um, she just lay there like she was sleeping, lifeless. Um, I couldn't do anything, I would just look at her and cry, cry, cry. And uh, I realized that throughout all of this, even up to now, I'm the one that is the weak one. She's strong, She's she's been strong the whole time. Now, Austin is my eight-year-old son. He was diagnosed with cerebral palsy at birth. Uh, we had twins and lost one, and he lived. And we've had, uh, he's had a struggle since birth. He's been in therapy since four months of age. And uh, he's in occupational and physical therapy now with kids in motion, and he's doing just great. And the cerebral palsy that he has is mild because it will never get worse. He will only get better as time goes on. What's your favorite part of Walt Disney World? I think that I use the payphone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what he says. <laughs> that's what he says, man. All these rides. And he says to me, his favorite part of Walt Disney World is using the payphone. Yeah. And he's telling the truth. <laughs> uh, dear Brianna, when I first found out about you, I was so excited that I would be a father. 
I anticipated the day you came and your very existence is truly a miracle. You are such a strong person <coughs> and you have made me stronger just by seeing the hurdles you cross daily. I thank God that we made the right decision to bring you into this world and three minutes into your life you held my finger and I knew you would be just fine. Sweet Brianna, what do I say? When I met you, your dad, when I met you and your dad, you were so precious and were so grown up for two years old. Now I look at you, a young woman who has taken back her life by becoming independent and proving all doctors wrong. I have watched you grow into this perfect little person who is so much stronger than I could ever be. You have impacted my life so much by just your determination to get up and do it all over again every day. We don't tell you enough how much we love you and are so proud of you. You were here first before any of the other three children. You have been there to help out all these years being such a special big sister. I hope you have the time of your life and don't let anyone, including your dad and me, stop you from achieving your goals. You can be or do anything. You have a great daddy and I love him for letting me help raise you. I do not know how my life would have ended up without this family. You have taught me to be a better person and how to love life. You taught me how to use uh, what God gives us and not complain about what he doesn't give us. I know he's put you in my life for a reason. I look forward to all the great times ahead and watching you grow into a beautiful woman. On Saturday, the kids got to be the Grand Marshals in the parade yes. at Walt Disney World. And uh, I got to sit next to Austin while we were being the Grand Marshals. And he was sort of kind of into it at the beginning, was kind of waving. But he's such a thoughtful <laughs> kid. You're so thoughtful. And he's, you know, t takes some time to put together what he wants to say. Exactly. And he, uh, you know, wasn't really sure about this Grand Marshal thing. He's like, where's my dad? Where's my dad? So well, we're going to see him right at the end of the parade. <laughs> but then once I decided to tell him that this was going to be a very big honor that this was going to be very hard work to be the grand marshal of the parade because we got to wave at all the little kids then he thought about it for a minute and he was like well yes it is very hard work to be a grand marshal at the parade and then sure enough he was waving at everybody <laughs> Sally has Down syndrome, which is a genetic disorder. She has an extra 23rd chromosome. She's also um, got nystagmus. She's farsighted. She's hypotonic. She has hypothyroidism. She has cardiac defects. She has lax joints. Dear Sally, you are one of the three brightest stars in my life. You bring joy and love to all you meet. When you were born, your daddy and I had to explain to your sisters that you would be different from other children, but we love you all, no matter what. You touch the lives of all you meet. You won't remember, but once you went up and sat next to an elderly gentleman sitting on a bench at Walmart and said, hey, Grandpa, and patted his leg. With tears in his eyes, he looked at me and said, I hope you know you have something special here. I looked at him and said, yes, yes, sir, I do. That is your gift from God. You teach unconditional love and spread love and joy wherever you go. I love you, my Sally, with all of myself. Love, Mommy. She fills my heart with such joy. All my kids do. She is... She is... She is the neatest kid in the world. 
I, you know, there's a lot of people that wouldn't carry through with all this stuff. I can never imagine my life without her. And she, actually, she'll probably always be with me. But she says not, you know, but I just, she is my life. All my kids are. And she, she is one of the brightest stars that I've got. She's beautiful. Sorry. <laughs> she suffers from Dubowitz syndrome, which is a congenital disease. Um, it affects all her internal organs. They're all completely small as well. Um, she has the bird-like features, the very small facial features. Um, her body produces about 3% of the growth hormone that it needs. Um, therefore, she is on a growth hormone supplement nightly for that. But she will overcome this. I carried her into the park, and we were walking down Main Street. And when she saw Cinderella's castle for the first time, there's something about that castle with little girls. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, that's your, that's your castle. That's where you belong. You're a princess. And she said, all I need now is a blue dress. Because I guess that's what Cinderella oh, yeah. wears. Yeah. So during uh, during breakfast, Bert and Stacy snuck out and went over to the gift shop and got a, a, a brook sized uh, Cinderella dress and um, some Cinderella shoes. Mm -hmm. And then as she was walking up Main Street uh, uh, with her with her mom in the stroller, uh, they came around you know from behind the stroller and had out the you know handed her the dress and said, "Hey, would you like to wear this when you go see Cinderella's castle?" And I mean, she was grinning from ear to ear. Baby girl, I'm unsure where to begin this letter to you. Brooke, you have completed something in me that I never knew to be missing. So often I refer to you as my hero. That is because you saved me from myself. Can't do that. That's okay. That was powerful in itself. <laughs> yeah. Should we have somebody read it for you? <clears throat> it says, baby girl, I'm unsure as to where to begin this letter to you, Brooke. <clears throat> you have completed something in me that I never knew to be missing. I so often refer to you as my hero. That is because you saved me from myself. Before I knew I was pregnant with you, my life was completely headed in the wrong direction. God knew what it was going to take to straighten me out, and that was you. It was amazing how my life prioritized itself when I was expecting you. You've been the best thing that has ever happened to me. You have taught me about the things that really matter in this life. You have taught me not to take such simple tasks as speaking and turning on a light switch for granted. You've taught me to keep fighting. You are the reason I get out of bed every day and continue that fight. I have fallen short at so many things in my life, but you will be my great accomplishment. Brooke, life is hard. Unfortunately, life will be more difficult for you. People are very cruel in this world. Please remember, you must be the better person. Things in this life can only defeat you if you allow them to. You will overcome all of your disabilities if you never let them become a crutch. Never run from your adversaries. You are as big and strong as you choose to be. You are a fighter. You've been fighting for your life since you were two hours old. <clears throat> Through all of the hospital stays and doctor's visits, you have fought and won. You have touched more lives in four years than most do in a lifetime. You have an unbelievable support group. A lot of people love you and will support you in whatever decision you make in your life, whether they like it or not. Your life is your destiny. Brooke, most of all, I have always been here and will remain. I love you more than I could ever put into words on paper. Please know that there is not anything that you cannot come to me with. If I do not have the answer, we will find it. Nothing you can or will do will ever change the way I feel for you. You are the single most important thing in my life. Keep smiling, my angel. I love you, hero. Love, mommy. We thank you all so much for everything that you've done for us while we've been here. Thank you so much for this trip. It meant the world to me and my family, and especially Mariah Austin. They've had a blast. Thank you so much, everybody. 
No, I just, I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. I want to say thank you to you, you guys. You've been terrific. Honestly, it was just so amazing that we could have a time like this for family, and I just want to say thank you so much. I cannot say thank you enough to each one of you, everybody who sponsored this trip. Y'all made a dream come true for me and my family, and these will be memories that we will cherish forever. And I mean, honestly, just thank you so much, so much. I really appreciate what y'all have done for me. Um, kids are what it's all about, and um, I think Disney World, Walt Disney World knows that best, that uh, kids are what it's all about, and they're the ones that make the world go round, and um, that they all come in different shapes and sizes and packages, just like all of us amongst the human race, and um, even though we all look a little bit different and have a little bit different struggles, that um, all of our hopes and dreams and little magical moments are the same, so I think that's what I'm taking away from it, is that um, I think... Having a family and having kids are what we're here for. Normally, it's Crash that does the last M-I-C-K-E-Y, and we end the broadcast that way. But Christopher has a Dynavox, and we told you guys <laughs> about the Dynavox. So it only seems to make sense to me that since he spent all this time programming in our final M-I-C-K-E-Y song, that we let Christopher do the honors this year and we end it that way. All right, Christopher, take us home, dude. M I C K Y M O U S E. We'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Bye. will cheer when they see my face and the voice keeps saying this is where I'm meant to be I will find my way I can go the distance I'll be there someday if I can be strong I know every mile will be worth my while would go most anywhere to feel like I Where?